Congratulations. Welcome back. Now, I must comment you at this point. We have already covered two packages. We covered Windows package and we have covered Microsoft Word and now we are into the third package and you're still here with me. You've been consistent. So I must congratulate you for that. This is how you build your skills. If you really want to get good at something, you need to be consistent because consistent creates momentum. At the moment you build momentum, you are good to go. So I must congratulate you for coming to this far. And today, I want to introduce you to Microsoft Excel, a totally new package. But before we do that, I want to make sure that uh, you did and you practiced with mail margin. Have you done it? If not, I recommend you pause this video lesson. Do not allow yourself to go ahead to a new package while you have not mastered and practiced what you did the previous lesson and while you have not really done a good practice on what. Right? So I would recommend if you haven't done mail margin and you haven't really done good practice on what, you can pause this video lesson and practice that before we enter into a new packet. But my belief is you've already practiced and you are excited to enter into a new packet. And that is what we are going to do at this point. Now, what you notice on my screen is we are where we left off in the previous um, lesson. And I did this intentionally because once you've done with your mail margin, I believe you did this, if you didn't do it, once you're done with your mail margin, you need to shave your work. My belief is you shave your work, all right? So we want to save our work before we dive into Microsoft Excel. And it's very simple. You just go to file. And if you did do that now, you, you, um, you can do it right now. You go to file and then you click save. What you notice is this, you probably notice this. It will also require you to save this document again afresh. Why? The first document that you created was the main document, which you called here interview. It only had one letter. Then you created the data source and you are required to save again and you saved it as data source. Now, once you complete mail merging, it's a totally new document now because it has five letters or the number of letters that are equal to your recipients. And so, Word will require you to save it again. So, let's save our work. Let's call this one um, mail merged, mail merged letters okay or let's just call it interview letters let's call it interview invitation invitation letters i just wanted to clarify that because you probably wondered why am i having to save this again and i have already saved uh, this document like three times now the first document was one single letter which we called interview or the main document we ran through the process of creating a data source which we saved again on its own independent and then when we completed mail match we have we had combined the data source the main document and now we have a new document with five letters or the number of letters that are equal to the number of spins that you chose um, to send the letters to and now you have to save that one on its own so you save it then you click save and then you're good to go and now we can close this one you notice this is the original document that you created and it's just one letter all right so they are separate document all of this so you can close this one we make sure first of all we save any changes that we meant and then we close it and then I can close this one and I will close this document right there. Great. So there we are. Now, welcome to a whole new world, Microsoft Excel. Now, before we dive in, I want to explain what Microsoft Excel does. In Microsoft Word, 
we dealt with manipulating textual data. Okay, when you're dealing with the volumes of textual data, you use Microsoft Word. But when it comes to Excel, Excel is built and designed to deal with numerical data. Think about those people who go out to carry out some research work. They go out and collect data. When they collect that data, the data has to be processed. First of all, once they collect the data, they feed it in Excel. Then that data has to be processed. Think about someone who is supposed to be sitting somewhere and um, they're supposed to be an analyzing exam, for instance, and they're supposed to make some comparisons and uh, calculate student marks and determine how student performed. While we did a bit of that in Word, one is not the best in doing that. The best program that has the power to manipulate a ton of numerical data to give you what you want it is Microsoft Excel. Think about someone who is an accountant and they have to track sales, they have to calculate um, the sales that they have meant in a day, they have to really deal with figures. They have to use Excel. Of course, there are other programs they can use apart from Excel, programs like QuickBooks, but really at basic level, they can use Excel to do all that they want to do. So. When you're dealing with a lot of numerical data whereby you need to do a lot of analysis and calculation that is where excel comes in so we're not going to be typing a lot but we're going to be really dealing with a lot of data in terms of manipulating numerical data that's what you do in this new package so let's get started how do you load the program uh let's type microsoft office office let's see whether we can see excel here if excel is not there let's, let's add office we want to see the office folder it's not coming up so what you do is you can type microsoft excel and here it is so we click give it time program loads here you are now what you notice this is totally different in excel we don't have pages okay and it looks like a maths exercise book why we're going to be dealing with the figures numerical data and so we don't have a blank window whereby we can type the typing is going to be very minimal we're going to be entering data and figures and dealing with them right now i want to walk you through the features of excel before we get started the first thing that you notice when you open microsoft excel is that it has two programs notice here we have two closing button there's a closing button here and another closing button here this minimizing button here or restore window here there's a minimizing button here there's a restore window here and there's a minimizing button here that is not how word looks like microsoft word has only one closing button you close it you've closed the entire program but excel is different so it has two programs now, this is what you call the mother window and the document window. Now, let me show you. If I close this, I will be closing the document window. But the mother window, which is up here, will remain open. Let's try it. I close this. It's gone. Now, I cannot feed anything here. I cannot type anything here. What I have closed is the document window. But the mother window is still here. So if I, click, if I click this on to close, I will now be closing the mother window. So Excel has two programs or two windows, the mother window and the program window, right? But Word has only one. So how do I get the document window back? I'll have to go to new and then I'll have to click uh, new then i'll have to click create right so to restore it back uh, let's close right here we are so here we are so this is now i have restored our document window now something else you also want to note excel has what we call and a brand new through the features of excel which is studying the 
interface how it looks like excel has what we call columns and columns these are the see this vertical partition running down we call those ones columns okay the vertical partitions running downwards and then it has rows and these are the horizontal partition running across these are what you are calling rows then excel has what you call formula bar remember it's used for calculation so this is a bar that allows you to enter a formula and this is a bar that you call formula bar this white bar here this is where you enter your formulas when you want to perform any calculation of your choice then it has what you call column headers the way you spell column header is column headers excel has column headers and they are the ones labeled a b c d what are column headers they are identifiers of different columns in excel if i sorry if i click like here it will not select the entire column it will just select that cell but if i click j it will select the entire column why j is a column header it is it identifies the entire column so if you want to select the entire column all i need to click is you click j if i want to select the entire column of m all i need to do is click m the m is the column head i click m it will select the entire column but if i click below here below m it will only select that cell okay so we have column headers and they're the ones labeled a b c d then you have raw headers they're the one labeled one two three four five if i click just here it will select that cell but if i click the raw header the four it will select the entire row why because a raw header identifies the entire row and how do you spell raw headers raw raw headers so raw headers or raw header identifies a given row and that is how you spell it then we have what we call cells this is a cell and this is a cell where a column intersect with a row like this is column l where it is in the intersecting with row six where they meet and intersect they create a cell so we call these ones are so we call these ones cells they are intersections of columns and rows now every cell has an address or a name how do you address a given cell you address a given cell by first mentioning the raw header and then the column header for instance what's the name of this cell it's i3 it's i because it's column i and then row 3 so the address for this cell is i3 what's the address for this cell it's k 12 okay so if you want to address this cell when you say or when you type k12 to excel the excel program will know you are referring to this cell what's the name of uh, this cell it is f22 all right that's the name of this cell and you can see the name of the cell here in this we call this one name box notice on this name box it's indicating you the name of the cell what's the name of this cell again in the name box it's saying it's m10 y this is the column m where it meets with row 10 where they intersect they form a cell so those are cell addresses and then we have something else that's very unique now down here you're going to notice we have sheet one sheet two and sheet three in excel there are no pages they are only sheets now sheets are actually the working area where you enter your data and normally excel will open up with three sheets you can add more sheets later on if you want and if you're using a different office like office 2013 or office 2016 excel might open with only one sheet okay so whether it opens to one sheet or several sheets you can always add as many sheets as you want we will be doing that i'll be showing how to do that so these are sheets so 
once you enter your data on this sheet and it's full and you want to enter some more data you can always go to sheet 2 and to enter data here and then if it's full and you want to continue you can always go to another sheet and to enter data in this sheet and if you continue you can always add another sheet so we call this one sheet now basically sheet is the working area in excel now the entire document that you create in excel and you save it let's say if i save now just this one with the data written raw header if i save the whole of this one i will have saved a book that's why it's indicated here book two why book two the one that you opened earlier on first which we closed the document window was book one and now this is book two so a book has several worksheets and in this case our book has only three worksheets sheet one sheet two sheet three so any document that you create in excel and you save it independently we call that one a book but inside that book there are several sheets they can be as many as you want them to be then one more thing down here you can use this scroll bar use this scroll bar if you want to scroll sideways okay you can scroll all the way then we have we call this one horizontal scroll bar it helps you to scroll sideways and then you have the vertical scroll bar here that it helps you to scroll up and down this is going to scroll up and down we call this one scroll bar then we have this bar here that holds sheet one sheet two sheet three we call it sheet bar right and sheet bar holds all those sheets all right that you've got familiar with the interface of microsoft excel why don't we get to work so how do you use excel basically use excel to manipulate data that is exactly what we are going to be doing so we start right off with manipulating some data remember how we did uh student performance in 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 word we can do it in excel and it's more simpler in excel so why don't we enter data and try to work with it so to go uh, to activate any cell all you need to do is move there and click that cell the cell becomes active and you can type inside that cell right now before we actually start typing anything i want to talk about this formula bar here what's the purpose of this formula bar first of all it has a number of functions number one that is where you enter your formulas okay if you're performing any calculation you want to enter your formula you can enter the formula uh, in the formula bar number two you can use the formula bar to actually enter data in any given cell you select the cell and then you click the formula bar and you type the data that you want on the formula bar that data will be entered on the cell you can also use the formula bar to cancel any calculation if you enter any formula and you want to cancel the formula all you need to do is click this cancel the formula will be cancelled so the that function is you can use it to cancel formulas or to cancel calculations the first option we said you enter your formulas there you want to perform calculation second function we said that uh, it's used to enter data in a cell click and cell click there you type your data it will be entered in that cell third it's used to cancel calculation you're performing any calculation and you want to cancel it you just need to click this cancel fourth it is used to execute calculation you enter your formula there and you want to execute it to get the answer you just click this green tick and it will execute that formula that's function number four and then function number five it is used to edit data in a cell so let's say you type something here and you don't like what you have typed you can just click what you've typed let's say if i type like pop and i wanted to type people i just type something like that and i don't like it i can just click here and change it from there from the formula bar not from the cell but from the formula bar i just 
delete and type people if that is what I wanted to type so you can use to entity data in a shell I want to enter data anywhere I just click and rather than uh, enter data on the shell I can just come and click there and then type the data that I want and it will be automatically and that in that shell so those are the five functions of formula bar do not forget that used to execute uh, formulas it's used to cancel calculations it's used to enter data in a cell it's used to edit data in a cell and it is used to what's the fifth function so the first function is it's just to enter formulas okay you want to enter formula you use it you want to cancel a calculation you use it you want to execute a formula you use it as a that function the fourth function you want to enter data in a cell you use it the fifth function you want to edit data in a cell you use it all right now that you know that we want to get started so we are going to be using sheet one it's always to know which sheet that you're using we are going to be using sheet one so you have to know which sheet you are using otherwise you can enter data and then you look for it let's say you've entered data in sheet 3 like let's type that one and then for some reasons without knowing you click sheet 1 then you look for the data that you entered and then you will not be able to see it why because you didn't enter it in sheet 1 you entered it in sheet 3 because you have to know which sheet you enter in data now quick things um, or a few things that I want us to actually master before we get to work I have mentioned that these worksheets you can add them and you can remove them so let's say I have a ton of work and sheet 1 and sheet 2 are not enough I want an extra sheet to be able to continue uh, analyzing and, and entering my data how do you add another sheet there are various ways but I, I want to show you the most simpler one first just come here and click this icon okay it's going to give you a new sheet now if you're using Microsoft Office 13 or Office 16 you might see something like a plus sign here instead of this icon you might see a plus sign. you just click the plus sign and you're going to get a new sheet so let's try you click here and there you have you have now sheet 4 the most easiest way to add a sheet you click it again you get sheet 5 right it's the easiest way to add a sheet but it's another way the other procedure of adding a sheet is you have to go to home and then you go to insert you click there then you click insert a sheet and you click and you are now getting another sheet we have sheet six again you go to home not to insert remember these are menus and this menus will if you click any given menu what you see here will change all right what you see here will change depending on which menu you have clicked here all these are commands they are commands by the way if you click home what do you call the whole of this that's stretching along here we call them ribbons and these ribbons contains contains different commands so if i click insert what i'm going to see here is a ribbon that has all the different commands that are associated to it insert and you see the ribbon is subdivided into sections there's a section here called tables another section called illustration another section called charts another section called spark lines these sections we call them panels all right the whole of this from pivotal table all the way to symbol here we call that one a ribbon but the subdivisions the sections in each ribbon we call them panels okay you click page layout and you get to do a different ribbon and it has different panels arrange panel sheet options scale to fit page setup and all that it's good to understand that now you'll also notice 
that excel you can also do margins you just go to page layout you click here and you can set the different margins right it also has page orientation you can determine your orientation whether you want landscape or portrait uh basically like everything else that you did in word you're good to find it here although there are some things that you find here that are not in word because the excel is built to do different things all right let's go back to home so i showed you how to insert two procedures that you can use to insert a sheet you click this one so one procedure you click this icon here or button here you'll be able to insert a new sheet or you go to home and then you go to insert and then you click sheet you're going to get a new sheet now you can also come to the sheet bar right here this is the sheet bar not down here this bar that contains the sheet you right click this is what we get okay you can right click inside here so that one will give us what we are looking for you right click anywhere here and then you go to insert then you click insert and then this one will pop up and then you can decide whether you want to let's see shift cell right shift cell okay that will not work let's close this one so basically there are those two methods of inserting um a sheet my guess is this is another method whereby you right click and you still are able to insert a sheet let's see whether that one works if i right click this sheet let's see what we get insert then we pick worksheet and then we click okay yeah that's the third method you can right click any worksheet pick any worksheet like sheet 3 right click it and then you go to insert and then you pick worksheet and then you click ok and you'll be able to insert another sheet so there are three procedures on how to do that great now that you know that what else this is what I want you to do I want you to first of all understand that you can change the name of these worksheets they don't have to be called sheet 1 sheet 2 sheet 3 which and this is very helpful because when you're working with your data and if you have specific uh, data in a given sheet you want to give that sheet a name that tells you what kind of data that is there maybe if you have sales records in one sheet you want to rename that sheet sales record if the other sheet holds student performance you want to make sure that um, that's the name of the sheet it helps you to be able to understand what is in a given sheet so how do you give your sheet different names we call it renaming a sheet how do you rename a sheet it's very simple you can click the sheet twice very fast sorry actually not very fast very slow like if i select sheet 2 and then i click it again twice i'll be able to write the name that i want so i can call that one records or I can call that this one student record if if or if I have recorded exams there I can write exams okay again how do you rename a sheet select the sheet and then click it twice first of all you select it make sure it's selected and then when it's selected click it twice very fast we call this one double clicking and then it changes to a black uh it's highlighted with black background meaning now you can type what you want so we can call this one um cut marks okay select this sheet you click it twice and then call this one sales that is where we've recorded our sales so you can rename your sheet by using that symbol procedure there's another way of renaming a sheet and that is select the sheet then go to home and then 
go to format here make sure you are on home menu then you come to format here and then you go down to where you have rename can you see rename let's see whether we can see rename column within the default ID. yeah rename sheet you click rename sheet and then you can type the name that you want for that sheet so we can call this one um, analysis actually exam analysis right so that is the neck the second procedure that you can use to rename a sheet that that procedure is by the way, let's do one more on the second procedure so you get right you select the sheet make sure it's selected and then go to home and then you go to format here and then you come back to rename and then you can call it research research data all right this one more final or rather one more procedure of renaming a sheet and that is you just right click the sheet you right click it and then you come to rename and then you type a new name and then you can call this one uh, failed data so that is how you rename a sheet so I want you to pause this video lesson take a few minutes first of all practice inserting a new sheet and then renaming a sheet once you've done you come back you resume and then you continue with the next thing so go for it practice renaming a sheet and practice adding sheets when you come back i'm going to show you how to delete a sheet and how to move your sheets around how to produce copies of your sheet and a bunch of other things so i'm giving you a few minutes to do that go for it practice and then come back and let's continue great welcome back i want to believe that you have uh, done practice on that now I want to show you how to I want to show you how to actually move your sheet around let's say for instance I have the cells the exam but if I want to move the cells sheet somewhere in between cut marks and field data or I want to have this exam analysis being the first one here or I want to have the cut marks starting here how do you move sheets around it's very easy you come to the sheet that you want you click and hold down the left mouse button you click and hold down do not release it hold down then move it up by dragging your mouse and then move it along you drag it and then you drop it at the beginning and that sheet will be moved here so now here is our sheet you can also get exam analysis we click hold it down lift it up drag it and then you drop it right here if you drop it right here it will become the first one so you want to drop it right here so that it's the second one following cut marks notice this black arrow here it's a black arrow here depending on where the arrow points if it points there and then you drop it it becomes the first one if it's here you drop it means this sheet that you are carrying here will be following cut marks you drop it there and there you are so that is one procedure of moving the sheet around there's another way of doing that and that is you select the sheet you want and then you go to home you click home menu and then you go to format once you go to format you go to move or copy so i click move or copy you get this dialog box opening up now so what you do notice you have move or copy and this move selected sheets and this is book two of course but the most important thing to pay attention is this ones this is before sheet i've selected 
field data. If I click cells here, it means I want to move field data before. Notice this one, before cells, which means the field data will be placed here between analysis and cells. Because I've said that I want to move it before cells. So let's say I want field data to be in between sheet 6 and research. What do I do? I need to move it before research. So I need to pick research data here. This sheet here called research data. So that this sheet called field data, which I have selected, will be moved before field research data. So I click research data, then I click OK. And here it is. It will come before research data. There is another procedure, or the next, the second procedure of moving a sheet. Let's do it. Let's move this sheet for in between exam analysis and cells. So what are we going to do? We are going to move it before cells. So let's, let's do it. Select the sheet, and then you go to home. All right, and then you go to format. And then you go to move or copy sheet. Great. So we want to move it before cells. We want it to come in between exam analysis and cells. So you pick cells. It will be moved before cells. You click OK. And there you go. So that's the second procedure of moving sheet. Now, this are that procedure. And let's see that is that procedure works whereby you right click the sheet and then you have move or copy you click move or copy command and it gets you back here again we want to get this sheet and we want to move it to be the last one here so what do you do i scroll here and i'll click this move to end if you click move to end this sheet will be placed here at the final sheet after research data let's do that Move to end click ok there you go so those are the three procedures that you can use to move your sheet around now i want to show you one more thing what if i want to create a copy of a sheet let's say for instance i have this sheet called cut marks when the student did the exam i fed the cut marks there but then i want to have two copies of those cut marks in two separate sheets how do you do that you just get the cut marks sheet and you make a copy of it and the copy you can call it cut marks cut marks one and the original one can remain cut mark just cut marks or the copy that you make and you can call it cut marks two and the other one remains as cut marks why so that you are able to differentiate between the two. You cannot have both of them with the same name. So let's say we want to produce a copy of this. Assuming this is our cut marks, what do you do? Uh, almost the same, like almost the same procedure um, we've done with moving. What you do is you select it, you go to home, and uh, you come to format, and you go to move or copy sheet. Now, at this point, we don't want to move. So you activate this checkbox that says create copy. That is what you want to do. All you want to do is create copy. So you activate create copy and then you click OK. And to get your copy, it will create, exactly create another copy and call it cut marks too. So if you had cut marks here, you good to have the same, same cut marks here. If you have any data here, you need to have the same same data here because now you have two worksheets that have the same data let's try that again you select the field that you want or the sheet that you want let's say field data then you go to home and then you go to format then you come down to a move or copy sheet and then you activate this create a copy and then you click ok there you go now you have filled data two, and the original field data remains here that's one procedure where's the other procedure 
the other procedure is simple right click the one that you want to make a copy so if i right click this one then i go to move for copy and then i activate create copy and then i click ok and there you are so that is how you create a copy of a given worksheet all right so i want you to practice those two procedures you practice how to move your sheets around you practice how to uh, make a copy in fact let's do one more so that you have three things to do let me show you how to delete a sheet let's say you have a given sheet and you probably you don't need it you want to do away with it how do you delete it it's very simple select the sheet let's say i want to delete sheet six select the sheet you go to home and then you come to delete here you click there then you click delete sheet you click delete sheet the sheet is gone that is how you delete a sheet pretty simple now what's the other procedure the other procedure is you right click the sheet you right click and then you click delete and it's gone okay so there are two ways you can delete a sheet first one you select the sheet and then you go to home and then you come to delete and then you click delete sheet that's what and then data may exist now if the sheet contains data excel is meant to protect what you have so it will show you or display this information and let you know that there's something inside that sheet if you delete it you will permanently lose it if you want to go ahead and delete you click delete if you want to cancel you click cancel and it will not delete that data notice that for the cells or rather for the worksheet that didn't have any data you don't get that information but if excel notices this data there the assumption it makes is that data might be very important so you get that uh, information so let's delete analysis there's nothing here so we right click and then we click delete and it's gone so i want you to pause at this point and I want you to practice creating a copy of a sheet, moving a sheet, and deleting a sheet. And then when you come, we are going to resume and we need to go ahead and I'm going to show you something new. So pause, go for it, practice deleting, practice creating a copy, and practice moving around sheets or moving a sheet from one point to the other. And I'll see you in the next section. Fantastic. So I hope you practiced those three things that you did. All right. Now, what are we going to do? We want to start working. We want to start dealing with data. So we're going to do at this moment is that we're going to feed data in this worksheet. All right. And then you're going to start manipulating that data. So let's go for it. Uh, let's assume that um, we want to let's just feed student marks for easy understanding before we get to something more complex. Let's feed student marks. Uh, let's see. Let's say we have this student they have done their exams we want to feed their cut marks and then we want to analyze their cut marks and so we are going to use the cut marks here okay go to the the sheet called cut marks if you don't have a sheet called cut marks i want you to create one you call it cut marks we want to feed student cut marks there so make sure there's nothing so i want to delete this data here i just click it and then i press delete on the keyboard let me pull my keyboard once i click the data that i want to delete i can just click dial this represent the delete key so I click dial and that data is gone All right let me collapse my keyboard so when i click there and let's let's feed student marks 
let's say here we have student by the name um, let's start from here let's no, let's start from here so we have student by the name Michael you can write the full names if you want but for the purposes of learning we're going to be writing full names so we have Michael and then we have James and then we have Harrison and then sorry Harrison Harrison and then we have um, who is this we have uh, Samson just need five of them and then we have Melvin all right this student they have done exams and they have done maths they have done biology they have done chemistry they have done physics they have done English and they have done geography let's feed their marks go to click there and feed student got 70 now I want to show you something that's very important there are a number of ways that you can move around your worksheet or navigate around your worksheet one of it is you just click where you want to move to or you click the shell that you want to enter data but there are other keyboard keys that you can use to move around and i want to show you those keyboard keys as we enter data here so let me pull my keyboard here's my keyboard and let me position it there so currently that is where we are so if i enter data there like let's say 79 and i want to move to the next here rather than click here I can use this keyboard key here we call this ones arrow keys these four keys we call them arrow keys we have an arrow key that is pointing upward we have an arrow key that is pointing sideways or rather to the right sorry yeah to the right we have an arrow key that's pointing to the left we have an arrow key that is pointing downward you use this arrow key to move around same case with the word you can use arrow key to move around so now i want to move to chemistry all i need to need to do is click that arrow key and i get to chemistry i enter 96 i click arrow key 48 i click again the arrow key so i can use it to move around so that i don't have to use the mouse every now and then now i want now to come down here so i'm going to use the down arrow key then I want now to be going backwards. So I'm going to use this um, arrow key that's pointed to the left. Notice this way you move very fast. And then I want to move downwards. So I'm going to use the arrow key. Then I want to move sideways. So I'm going to use this arrow key. to do the same using your keyboard and then we want to move downward is the arrow key we want to move toward the left so you use the arrow key pointing to the left just feed in data there we sorry there we are so now we use the arrow key pointed downward and we're going to enter student marks there You know how this now works let me just pull off my keyboard let's finish up with this so use the arrow key to move very fast on your data great so now we have our data here we want to do a number of things and number one we want to calculate the total right so i'll click there and type total 
able to calculate the total performance for these students. Now, something to understand, and this is very important. Let's say, for instance, we want to have a title for this data. In our data, it doesn't have a title. Let's say we want to say these are student cut marks. Okay. So how do you type that? And yet, we have started entering our data from the first row. If we don't have any other row above here. And we want our title to be above here. What you do is you insert a new row above here. Like we did when we were working the table in Microsoft Word. So how do you insert a new row? It's very simple. First of all, you click the current row. You can click there or you can click the row header one, which you select the entire row. And now you want to insert a new row. So how do you do it? You go to home and then you come to insert. And then let's see what happens when I click insert sheet row. There you go. So it will insert a row above the current selected row. And then from there now you can enter the title. So we want to enter our title here and we want to say student continuous assessment marks or student cut marks. Now you notice there are cells in Excel and so it doesn't provide you with a good um, layout or page space in which you can actually type your text so what you do like we did in word you can combine several cells together to create a bigger shell where you can enter the text that you want so that is exactly what you're going to do so how do you combine several cells together to create a big space or a bigger cell where you can type a lengthy text it's simple select the first cell hold down the left mouse button drag to select to select the other cells up to that point so if now several cells selected now we want to use these cells and we want to actually combine these cells to one big cell so once you select them you want to merge them together so let's see how we do that we go to home we go to format and let's see um, let's see what we have protect cell you click format cell actually you don't need to click you don't need to go through all that procedure let's close it all you need to do is you click home then you come here merge and center i click here and then i pick merge cell and they are now combined together and they form one big cell let's type in this one big cell what are we typing student cut marks let's go for it student cut marks great now we might want to align this title probably at the center here so that it is not on the left side the procedure is not different from what you did in word it's actually the same so you highlight you can actually just click the cell instead of highlighting the whole text you can click the cell you go to home then you pick this center alignment there you are they are center aligned you want to make them bold or you want to make the text bold you go to b click b great there you are good to go now we also want to bold these uh subjects so i can select these cells okay or i can just click this raw header select the entire row and then i just click bold and they are all bolded and then I want to bold this one, the students' names. I can click the column header here and it will select the entire column and click B. Or I can decide to select specifically the name. So I come and click this name, hold down the left mouse button, drag down, select only the names, and then I click B. Either way, it's the same. You make sure you are at home. Great. 
we have our data everything now seems perfect we got to go right ahead and perform our calculation now there are two ways that you can perform calculations in excel first one is when we call it um it's almost like manual whereby you have to enter the operands and the operator okay the operator could be your plus sign minus sign division the operand they are the figures that you want to go to manipulate that's one way the other way is whereby you can use a function now what is a function they are in built formulas these are formulas built within excel remember excel is meant for calculation so it has built it has built in formulas that you can just pull and use them to perform any calculation that you want so we're going to use both ways or both methods of calculation the first one is whereby you actually enter the formula yourself you enter the formula that you want yourself to get the calculation done the other one is whereby you use the function you pull the formula that's built within excel and you use it we start with the more simpler ones actually not simpler we start with the more um practical one whereby you have to enter the formula yourself before we go to the automated one so let's say now i want to calculate the total for this um these students so how do i do it first of all you go and click where you want to enter your answer and then let's now start using the formula bar remember to set the formula bar used to perform calculations you enter your formulas there so once you select where you want your answer to be entered you click the formula bar and now that is where you enter your formula now this is very important to note that is in excel anytime you want to start your calculation or to perform any given calculation you start your formula with equal sign the moment you enter equal sign in excel it triggers excel or it informs excel that that is not just data you are entering you want to perform calculation right so the equal cell sorry the equal sign tells excel you are entering a formula so let's start with the equal sign go to your keyboard and enter the equal sign let me pull uh out my keyboard equal sign now uh, it's normally here it's actually just the next one from the backspace so you click there you have your equal sign remember we are operating from the formula bar so you enter equal sign once you enter equal sign the next thing is you need to tell excel where is the data that you want to add up in this case we are getting some or we are adding up to see the total marks for this student so excel wants to know the next thing where is the data that you want to add up now don't be tempted to enter 70 no you're supposed to enter the cell that holds the specific data that you want to manipulate or to analyze or to add up so the question you want to ask yourself at this point is what's the name of this cell remember how i told you that cells have names and we learned how to name a cell we said the first thing that you the way you rename a cell is first by mentioning the column header and the row head so it's the name of this cell it's column b where column b meets row three so the name of this cell this cell michael that holds maths it is b3 because it's where column b meets row three so all you need to type in this formula bar in your keyboard right here is b3 so i type b and then i type 3. notice excel is able to know what you are referring to it goes right away to that cell and highlights the cell what's the next thing i want to enter an addition side which is here but if i click here on the keyboard it's here on this keyboard key what am i going to get i'm going to get equal sign why because this is a top character on a keyboard key that has two characters 
So how do I get the top character which did this? You have to activate shift. So you click shift and now you click it. So what you do is you press shift on your keyboard, hold it down without releasing it, hold it down and then you click or you press that key and you get your plus sign. This plus sign is what you are calling the operator. B3 contains the operand, that is the data you want to manipulate. So from there, let's go to the next thing. And that is the next cell. The name of this cell is C3. Okay. So you type C3. We have C3. And then plus sign. So hold down shift. You click the Q, the plus sign. Then you continue. The other one is D3. D3. Okay, you hold down shift plus sign and then the other one is e3 so we have e3 hold down shift as you hold it down click the q the plus sign and then the other one is f3 f3 hold down shift plus sign and then the final one is G3 so we have G3 and that is it so what you've done now we have entered the formula the formula is an addition formula and you want to add all the way from B3 you add C3 you add D3 you add F3 you have G3 notice that we are entering the names of the cells so after that what you do after that there are two things that you can do now to execute we just end up the formula now we want to execute the formula to get the answer there are two ways you can do it you can press enter on your keyboard and it will execute and give you the answer or you you can click this green tick on the formula bar let's start with the green tick you click it and there you go so you get your answer 440 Let's get to this one and let's calculate for James. You click there and then you go back to formula bar and then you enter equal sign. Now, we need to repeat the process, but now I want to show you a more easier way. Rather than type in, like now in this case, the cell that we are targeting is this one, which is B4. And so we can type B and then four and then we enter um, we hold down shift and then you use the plus sign okay but now instead of really typing them from the keyboard you can just click the cell so now if I want C4 rather than type C4 on the keyboard I can just click the cell and it will be entered automatically okay and then from there I go to shift I click plus sign and then I click the other cell, I go to shift, I hold it down, plus sign, and then I go to the next cell, I hold shift, plus sign, and then I go to the next cell, I hold shift, holding it down, plus sign, then I go to the other cell, and that is it. Now from there, all I need to execute. I can click this green tick to execute, or I can press enter on the keyboard. Let's press enter on the keyboard, there you go so that is how you execute now that you know how let me pull away my keyboard let's now finish up with this now let's go there again let's calculate for the remaining part we have before sorry that should not be before that should be b5 we have b5 plus 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 f5 plus g5 and you press enter to execute we have a problem now we have a problem because i end up plus sign here after g5 and shouldn't have a plus sign so what does excel what is the excel telling me microsoft excel found an error in your formula you end up do you want to 
accept the correction proposed what are the correction proposed this is how it's supposed to be okay so excel is built notice when you're making mistakes in your formula and oftentimes it's going to have a solution for that not all the times but oftentimes it's going to have a solution for that then you told to accept the correction you click yes to close this message and correct the formula yourself you click no if i click no you just close it and allow me to correct it if i click yes it will remove this plus sign here which is what the problem is and then it will remove it and then execute so i click yes i accept the correction great there we are and now we are here let's let's do for this let's I click there I click the formula bar and then I enter my equal sign and then it gets started with the calculation let's click C6 we have D6 we have uh, F6 and then we have sorry we have G. then you press enter okay if you can use the i'm um, notice i'm using this uh, bar down here to move my work to make it visible you can use this scroll bar here to move it around so or other sideways to scroll so here we are let's do the final bit i click here i enter the equal sign and then I click the first one, plus sign, second one, plus sign, D7, plus sign, E7, plus sign, F7, plus sign, G7. There you are. Then I can use this one. I click this one and I execute. Now, do you notice this something here? This green. If, if you can look carefully I don't know whether you're able to see this let me see whether I can zoom my window to enable you to see something here. try to zoom it for you can you notice this uh, something greenish here in this cell this indicates this formula might be different from the rest of the formulas Excel is meant to detect if there are issues with your formulas I don't know that you can see this let me zoom it a little bit great can you see this this indicates this formula might be different from the rest of the formulas and the sorry and the formula might be wrong okay so it points out to potential problem that might be there so to correct the problem we click the formula to see right to correct the problem we click the formula to see what the problem might be Let's click the formula you notice you're getting this and this when you point at this icon you told the formula is in this cell differs from the formulas in this area of spreadsheet uh, excel is meant to notice key mistakes that you might make when you're performing your calculation and it will highlight them put them out that is why we said it's built for dealing the numerical data and calculations. It's the best when it comes to this suit of program that come in the Microsoft Office. So let's see where the problem is. We go back to the formula to figure out. We have B6, D6, E6, F6, G6. Is that okay? Let's see where the problem might be. This is G6. Okay, what could be missing? You notice what's missing? C6. C6 is not here. We have B6, D6, and C6 is this one. So we have B6, D6, E6, F6, G6. Excel is able to notice this no C6. And most likely, that calculation is wrong. Some data has been eliminated. And it's able to figure out that and highlight that cell with a green this green mark here so let's fix it i'll click the answer so that i can see my formula on the formula bar then i'll go to where we are supposed to have 
this c6 i'll click in between b6 i'll click in between b6 plus i'll click there you notice now this one is missing so i'm going to put this one i will click to add it there then i'll click i'll make sure i end up plus side and then after that i'll click green tick and now we are good to go notice now that has been the mark has been eliminated or removed so that is how you do it and um now we are good to go now let me show you one more thing you notice that uh, some of these names here they are not they have been sorry they've been cut off by this uh we have this uh demarcations of the columns and so this name is very long and so it cannot fit within the cell it's been cut off so can you adjust your columns yes you can you just come in between the dividing or the borders of the columns when you come at the border of the column this is the border i'm talking about this subdivision at the point where columns are subdivided you come to that line and ensure you come to that line on the headers not here make sure you are on the header on the headers or column headers you come to that line the division of the two columns and you're going to have your mouse pointer having opposite arrows you click hold down and then you drag and you can resize any given column notice now you can see everything that was here so you can always resize them if something is not visible you resize them then you'll be able to see it so great now what you've done is uh we've done our first calculation it's that simple we need that equal sign the cell address and then the operators and then we are able to perform that calculation now you can also uh subtract numbers let's say for instance i have two values that i want to subtract let's say i have a number like one nine three and i want to have a number here like uh, something like that and i want to subtract this from this one and remember this one can be anywhere okay it can even be placed here you can place it there 368 they don't have to be below each other okay so it can be anywhere so if ever i want to get this and subtract it from this and get the answer you can do that let me pull up my keyboard and let me show you where you get the subtraction sign so i just need to if i want to subtract them and get my answer and let's say i want allow me to put this away let's say i want my answer to be placed here remember you can place your answer anywhere let's say i want that answer to be placed here all i need to do is i need to first of all enter equal sign so i click the formula bar then i enter equal sign right that triggers or activates or tells excel i want to enter a formula and then i'm going to pick the value this one by just clicking it to be end up there and then i enter equal sign for the equal sign i have to use this now this is underscore but above it we have this one here and use that dash as an equal sign but how do you get the dash you have to press shift hold it down and then you click that key and you all right that was the underscore actually so let's remove it delete it you just click here direct and you get the dash which we use as subtraction sign and then i click what i want to subtract i want to subtract the data in this cell and then you click enter and to get your sorry let me put off this one you get your let me show you you get your answer your answer is here so you can subtract you can even add let's say let's do one more subtraction so let's subtract that one and let's put the answer here we want to subtract 980 from this value so we enter equal sign and then we want to subtract we want v 
this and you want to subtract and a subtraction sign on the dash you want to subtract this and then you click green tick and you get your answer here so you can subtract any value regardless of where they are as long as you enter that in the formula bar and as long as you enter that correctly same case comes for addition i can get this and add this and put my answer wherever i want or if i want to type them close together like that sorry like that and then said i want to have my answer here it's all the same so the point is they don't have to be very close together they can be separate far apart and you still get the same same answer so let's say we want to add this up what you do you go formula by you enter the formula which is an equal sign and then you select this you end a plus sign we want to add them and then you select this they just press enter on the keyboard you, cl you click the green tick here on the formula bar there you go so you can add and you can subtract numbers even when they are scattered all over all right now the other thing is you can subdivide so let's say i have a number like um, let's say 49 right a number like 49 and uh, allow me to delete all this data here just allow me to delete this one so i can demonstrate what i want to demonstrate great so let's say we have 49 here and i want to uh, divide 49 and 7 the 7 can be anywhere on the cell so how do you divide it's very simple click where you want your answer let's say i want my answer here you click there and then you enter equal sign enter equal sign now let me pull the keyboard to show you which symbol you use for division so when i click here and i have my keyboard here allow me to pull it down here and allow me to scroll this one so we can see our data Just a minute. great so here we are so what do you use the symbol for first of all get 49 right so what do you use for for division you use this um let's see, use this backslash you click backslash and then you pick seven let's see all right might have a problem cell mm -hmm. found a formula you ended uh, okay i think we okay i think we need to use the forward slash let's see let's use the forward slash and let's see let's use now we pick seven great so use the forward slash for division and now you click uh, the and there you go you get seven so use forward slash not the back the backward slash use the forward slash for subdivision so you can divide numbers use the backslash you can um subtract numbers the subtraction sign or you can add numbers lastly if you want to multiply numbers you use this asterisk here this is the one that you use for multiplication let's try let's say we have we want to have 48 times 10 okay we have 10 there we want to multiply these two and we want to place the answer there so how do you do it it's simple get the equal sign and make sure you're operating from the formula bar you have the equal sign pick the cell that has the numbers you want to uh, multiply so you click this one and then you want to use this multiplication we normally call it asterisk and it's what to use for multiplication how do you get it if you click here you just get eight so what you do you make sure you hold down shift and then you click here and then you get that we used for multiplication so we want to multiply that one with the data in e10 and then after that you click the green tick and to get your answer it's 410 right so you can do multiplication 
you can do division you can do subtraction and you can do addition and that is how you do it so at this point i'm going to give you a few minutes to practice what you've done and then afterward we will go back to our original data and i'll show you a more easier way to perform your calculation once you do the first one there's an easier way to perform calculation for the rest in the meantime i want you to practice what you've done before we get into the next section where i show you how to do it in an easier way so you have a few minutes to do that go for it Awesome. I believe that you have practiced that. Now let's go ahead. Let me show you an easier way. Uh, I want to show you an easier way to perform your calculation. Let's delete what uh, this calculation that we did here. So allow me to delete this, the whole of it. I press delete and it's gone. Let's recalculate for the first one and then I'll show you an easier way on how to calculate for the rest. So you enter equal sign like we did. You enter the equal sign and then you enter that cell. Then you enter plus sign. You have the next. Sorry. We have. Sorry for that. So we have the next cell plus sign. The next cell plus sign. The next cell plus sign the next cell plus sign and the final cell then after that you can click this to execute there you go now once you get this one the first answer you don't have to really do it for the rest excel is powerfully developed to really automate some of these calculations so you don't ever have to do them for each student manually so what do you do if you look at this you notice there is a dot here at the bottom left corner sorry bottom right corner this corner here there's a dot there or there's a small dot there where um, exactly at the corner so you come exactly at that bottom right corner notice how your mouse pointer looks like looks like a plus sign but it's very um, thick but when you come close and really position it exactly at that dot it's going to change into a thin black plus sign when that happens it means you are exactly on the right spot on the exact dot where it is so at that point all you need to do is you click and hold down the left mouse button click and hold down the left mouse button then drag down to the last point there and then you release it once you do that excel will copy this original formula here this original formula here but it will only change it will only change these cells as you drag down it will retain the formula and it will just change the cell addresses so it so that it is able to calculate for James, Harrison, Samson, and Melvin. So what happens when you drag down is when it gets here, it will change from B3, it will create a B4, C4, D4, E4, F4, a G4. All right but retain the formula as a plus sign or as sum or addition and then you calculate for james it will do the same with arizon it will do the same with samson it will do the same with melvin so it will automatically calculate them for you so that is what you do you just do one 
and then you out of fill we call that one out of filling you out of fill the rest let me delete this one and show you again once you calculate the first one select the one you have calculated the answer and then go at the bottom right corner we have this dot here move your mouse pointer there and it changes to a plus sign black plus sign click hold down the left mouse button holding it down drag your mouse pull it down to cover the data that you want to calculate and then release your left mouse button and to get all your calculation done this is the power of excel you can do a lot of things with excel if you know what uh, technique that you use or what technique to use so that is how you perform your calculations we've really covered a lot in this lesson and uh, we are about to wrap it up but before we wrap it up there's something that i want us to do i want you to i want to show you how to do the same same calculation but this time around using a function all we've been doing is we've been entering the formula ourselves. Now it's the time we use inbuilt function within the Excel. Remember, functions are inbuilt formulas. We use the inbuilt formulas within Excel to perform the same same calculation. And I want to show you how to do that. Now, we're going to do the same same calculation, but not really manually like the way we've done it. We need to pull a function, apply it, see what we get. And then you could wrap up this lesson uh, at this point. So how do you do it? So I'll click here. Still going to do the same. It's total. Okay. But now, once you click where you want to answer, this is what you do. Uh, you can come to this F function. You click F function. And when you click F function, it is going to open up and show you a number of functions here and it's a function here called sum and sum is a function that enables you to perform calculation but before we do that let me show you an easier way you click where you want your answer and then you click there and then you enter equal sign then if you know the function the name of the function used to perform what you want to perform you just need to type the function and then you enter the range that has the cells you want to calculate and then you get to get your answer for instance we want to add and adding we know it's sum that's the name of the function so you just type sum okay and then you open with brackets so let me pull my keyboard here let's do the bracket we want to enter this opening bracket so we hold down shift press shift hold it down all right we have to make sure that uh good our cursor is there so we hold shift down and then we click this opening bracket and then we hold again shift down and then we click this closing bracket and then let's let me pull away this keyboard now you have this now inside here this now where you enter the range of the cells that contains the data you want to calculate now our data ranges from b3 all the way to g3 remember this cell is b3 for michael you move along the last cell that has the data we want to calculate is g3 so you enter that range there so you type b3 and to show that it's a range you put columns so let me pull my keyboard again here are the columns the two dots you have to use shift key and then you click here to enter those columns once you enter the columns you enter this g3 you can actually just type g and it's able to know you are talking about this range from here all the way to the end there let me pull out this keyboard so it will select the range once you've done that 
all you need to do is click this uh, execute and there you go we call this a function this is a function now a function has three components as you can see it has an equal sign the name of the function so let me type it for you we have what we call three components of a function okay three components of a function three components of a function so what are the three components of a function if i click this answer you can see the function notice if i click this answer and then i click this one they look different here we didn't use a function we actually used like we entered the formula ourselves but when you click here we are using a function the result is the same but we are using a function so a function has what we call equal sign starts with an equal sign so this equal this that's the equal sign so a function has a function has function has what we call um, equal sign equal sign and then it has what we call name of function and then ha then it's sorry the name of the function the name of the function and then it has what we call the argument okay the argument so a function as equal sign name of the function and argument equal sign of course it is this equal sign right there the name of the function it is this name of the function which is sum so you have to know the name of the function that performs a specific calculation argument it's the range of cells that has the data that you want to calculate and this in this case our range is from b3 all the way to g3 and what is under bracket here parenthesis is what you are calling the argument right now like you did with this other formula where you enter it manually you can come here once you calculate the first one using a function you can come here at the bottom right corner you click then you drag and do the rest for you so when you click these others it to show you the function that yeah, the function was e sum and then the range was b6 to g6 same case for melvin b7 to g7 right so that is how you perform your calculations one we have done it manually we just end up the operands we end up the formula manually we end up the operands and the operators and then we've also done it by entering the function now in the next lesson i'm gonna show you how to actually get the function from within excel instead of entering the function yourself manually i'm going to show in the next lesson how to pull the function from within excel and just apply it it's even going to be more simpler than what you've what you've done in this case or in the last bit of this calculation so here's the thing i want you to take your time and i want you to practice what you've covered in this lesson and then we meet in the next lesson we are going to start making really significant progress in how to handle excel and how to manipulate your textual data so go for it take your time practice and i'll see you in the next lesson as we dive into even more exciting stuff when it comes to working with excel until then get good at what you've done in this lesson